Good morning guys. Happy Sunday. Welcome back to another meal prep video. We are getting a super late start today. It is already 10 after 1. So uh, I slept in a little bit today. Had a late start. I didn't eat breakfast or anything. I'm getting ready to eat my lunch here in just a few minutes. But I wanted to go ahead and get started. Um, I just took like a quick shower. Got ready. Charlie did his part of the prep. So yeah, we're a little behind today. But I do have two easy meals on the menu for today. Um, I'm going to make this beef ragu recipe from Skinny Taste. Basically it's going to be ground beef and some chicken sausage. It's going to be cooked in the crock pot. I'm going to make some pasta to go with it. Uh, I'm going to make some extra pasta so that Charlie has extra pasta and then I got three zucchini so that I can have like a serving of pasta and then um, a zucchini zoodled up in there to bulk mine up a little bit on the nights that we have this. With that I'm just going to have some steamed broccoli. I will go ahead and steam it, put it in the containers with the um, meal and then I will uh, just season that up with some garlic powder, salt and pepper, whatever. So that's going to be meal number one. So that's going to be one that we've never tried before. Hopefully it is good. And then the second one we are going to do a chili. I'm not going to do the Chef Green Span. I think I did that one like a few weeks ago. This one is a different one. It seems pretty simple. It's just going to be um, I think Rotel tomatoes and some crushed tomatoes and um, yeah I'm going to cook that one on the stove. The other one's going to be done in the crock pot. I think you can cook the skinny taste recipe on the stove as well which I thought about it since I'm getting such a late start but it only needs to cook for four hours. I'm going to brown the meat before it gets started so if it doesn't set for the full four hours it'll be okay. And then for dessert I think I'm going to make a pumpkin cheesecake. It's been a minute since I've made that. I know I've made that on here several times but it's so low in points and it's so good. Both Charlie and I love it and it's pretty easy to make. Um, it does have to chill overnight so that is one that you know we won't be able to have dessert tonight. We'll have it tomorrow but no big deal. Uh, so that is what is on the menu for the day. Of course I will prep my fruit to go along with my sandwiches this week for lunch. Last week I did salads. This week I am going to do sandwiches. I did enjoy doing salads last week. Um, it was kind of a good little change up and I did like the way that I flavored my chicken so it had a little bit more flavor this time. They were good and I like the mix of the spring mix and the arugula together. So you know I may start alternating and doing some more chicken salads. It's also easy to eat. You know I can just grab my one container out and sit there and it's easier for me to edit almost and eat the salad than it is for like the sandwich and fruit and everything for some reason. Uh, but I did enjoy my salads, uh, but we are doing sandwiches and fruit this week. Um, I prep up my fruit. I will prep up my yogurt to dip it in. And then I'm also going to prep my breakfast and get that ready for the week. And yeah, so that's it. With all of that being said, if you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe, like this video, all of that good stuff. Follow me over on Instagram and join my Facebook group. I'll just leave all of the info here on the screen. And down in the description box is always a link to my Facebook group called Finding Our Way. And yeah, let's get into the video. Alrighty, so first things first today, we are going to do this skinny taste recipe. Let's see what it's called exactly. Slow cooker ground beef ragu. So what you need for that is some lean ground beef. The leanest I could find was 93.7. Um, I think a recipe calls for like 90.10, but I always try to go for the lowest fat that I can find because it does lower the points. Um, one medium onion, finely chopped, which we will not be using. We also need um, like a third of a cup of celery. This is probably a full cup of celery. And then uh, half a cup of carrot. It calls for like one large peeled and chopped carrot. We just did the baby carrots. I'm just going to go ahead and use all that because extra veggies is always a good thing. One link of either spicy Italian or sweet Italian um, chicken sausage or turkey sausage. So I found this chicken sausage at Walmart and we are going to use one link of that and put in there. 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. And then her recipe only calls for some kosher salt and two bay leaves. Okay. 
but in my opinion, it's going to be, it's going to taste too much like the tomato sauce if I don't season it up. So we are going to do salt and pepper, of course, and then we're going to add in some garlic powder, some Italian seasoning, some oregano, and some basil as well, because y'all know I need a little flavor. Who knows? I may throw in a little cumin and chili powder. Maybe not because I am going to make chili so that will definitely be in the chili recipe, but regardless um, I have my crock pot here. I just turned on the stove top function because you're supposed to Basically brown the ground beef and the chicken sausage and then do the carrots and the celery for a little while Then you transfer it into the crock pot, but this ninja crock pot is pretty neat because it does have the stove top function, so I can do it all in here. Hopefully, it's not too fatty so that I don't really have to drain very much fat off of it. We'll see. I may just leave it in there and just let it be, you know, part of it. But uh, I'm going to try to throw this together real quick. Hopefully, it's heating up some. Sometimes this takes a minute to get warm, so I went ahead and turned it on because we need to get the ground beef and the chicken in there and get it brown the celery and the carrots then we mix everything else up then it just cooks on low for four hours she said don't cook it longer than six hours or else it'll burn so i'm going to try to set it on low and just let it cook for four hours and i am going to give it just a little spray in my olive oil spray just so that it doesn't stick and we're going to get the ground beef in if i can get it out of the package and then we're going to just use one of these ground chicken. Okay, so I got the casing off of the chicken sausage and it's going in with the ground beef. I will be back. I'm going to brown these up and then we will add in the celery and carrots and stuff. Okay, so just a quick update. The meat is browning. This says to like transfer the meat out and then saute the celery and the carrots. So I'm actually going to saute those in a skillet separately. This actually takes a little longer to saute anyway. So I have a skillet over here. I have just sprayed it with olive oil. Her recipe calls, I mean, I've sprayed it with olive oil spray. Her recipe calls for actual olive oil, but that's a way to save points if you're following a recipe. Try to substitute out the oil. Not that fat's bad for you, but you just don't want too much of it. So I'm gonna saute these up. If you had onion, you would saute that as well. That way they will be ready to put in once the ground beef is done. Okay guys, so the celery and carrots is done. I'm just gonna add it in with the ground beef and the chicken sausage, which we did drain that. It had actually quite a bit of grease, so. Just FYI, 97.3 still has quite a bit of fat. So now I'm just going to go ahead and add in everything else. The beef is cooked. The chicken is cooked through. I've sauteed the carrots and the celery for a few minutes. So now we're going to go ahead and go in with our crushed tomatoes. <laughs> I almost forgot what this was called. I swear my brain doesn't work sometimes, especially whenever I'm recording. I'm going to get my bay leaves and then I'm going to add in some... Other stuff that she doesn't call for. So I'm going to add in three bay leaves. These are kind of small. I've noticed this thing of bay leaves that I've got is uh, got little bitty pieces in it. So I'm going to go ahead and add in some garlic powder. I just don't want this to come out tasting like tomato sauce. So if you ever feel like, if you ever feel like you need to, you know, spice things up a bit, don't be afraid to. Okay, this is Italian seasoning. I have to take the lid off because the little holes on this container are like way too small. And I want a lot in there. Same thing I'm going to do on the oregano. So I'm going to go in with a lot of oregano as well. And then we're just going to do a little bit of basil. And then I did put some salt and pepper on the ground beef. But then we've drained it. So I am going to go ahead and do another sprinkle of salt. And then we're going to go ahead and go in with a little more pepper. And we'll see what this tastes like. I have no expectations of it because I've never made it before. So now at this point, everything is in here. We're gonna give it a good stir. We have it on low and I'm gonna turn it down to four hours. And actually, Alexa, set a timer for four hours. Four hours, starting now. That way I don't forget about it because I could easily forget this thing is even working over here. Now to go along with this, I am gonna make some of the fiber gourmet pasta and I will zoodle my zucchini on the nights that we eat it and just warm it up in the microwave and add it to mine. So there we go. That's all there is to it. Four hours and then we will uh, put this together. Okay guys, fruit and yogurt bowls are done. Easy peasy, gonna put these up. 
get my breakfast done, and then we're gonna get started on the chili. Okay, I just wanted to give y'all a little quick glimpse of my scrambled eggs. I do cook them all in one huge skillet. Um, this actually takes quite a while because they kind of cook slow, and you know, I don't want runny eggs. I like everything completely well done. So I just kind of let it take its time. Just thought I would show y'all real quick. Still loving my new um, caraway pots and pans as well. And then, of course, I cook my bacon in the microwave. I just think there is no better way. So I'm going to finish this up, and then we will be ready to start the chili. And I need to put the pasta on to go with the... Um, beef ragu that we're making okay we are ready to get started on the chili i'm not exactly sure where i got this chili recipe from it's just one that i had saved in my app it actually says to cook it in the crock pot but since i have the other meal going in the crock pot we are just going to cook it on the stove i am going to use this really huge pot just because it's a lot of beans and tomatoes and stuff that are going in there i just want to make sure that i have plenty of room also i have the fiber gourmet out i still need to cook that i'm going to make both boxes there's only four servings in a box and so what I'm going to do is use three servings for myself and then just divide the other five servings between Charlie's three meals so that he would get a little bit extra rotini and then again I have three zucchini and I will zoodle one of those up each night that I eat this and kind of mix it in with my pasta and stuff so um, I have my pan going here I need to put the lid on it actually I forgot so that it will heat up faster so once that water gets to boiling i'm going to put the pasta in and cook it for like seven minutes or so but for the chili i am going to use this one pound of 99 percent lean ground turkey i have two cans of black beans one can of pinto beans a couple of cans of rotel a big can of crushed tomatoes and then of course chili powder cumin and then of course i will also add in the salt and pepper so fairly easy recipe and i'm just gonna like brown the meat get it all mixed together and then just let it simmer on the stove for a while at a very low temperature so let's just throw this together real quick i'm going to get my meat browned and we will be back and add everything else in get all my cans open all that good stuff all righty we are back i actually decided to do another pound of ground turkey just because the other one just looked like there was barely any turkey in here so i went ahead and did that and i'm going to go ahead and add everything else in so in here i have like three heaping tablespoons of chili powder and a heaping tablespoon of ground cumin. That's gonna go in. We're gonna go in with one can of original rotel, one can of fire roasted rotel, one can of crushed tomatoes. I usually always go with the Hunt's brand just because I know that it is a zero points, at least on my plan. I have two cans of black beans. I have drained and rinsed those. And then I'm not going to rinse the pinto beans. So I'm just going to put the pinto beans in with the liquid. And that is it. Easy peasy. You know, I got to looking at my recipe and like I used some red kidney beans before and like some chili hot beans. So it actually had points. I'm going to have to recalculate this because I changed the beans because black beans are zero for me. This actually could be a zero point chili, which I'm not mad about it. That means I can eat a lot of crackers and crush up in it on the nights that we have it, uh, which is good. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to get this uh, stirred really well. Uh, I probably need to add some more salt and pepper. I'll go ahead and do that now. I did salt and pepper the turkey. Then I'm going to let Charlie come in here and do a little taste test. He might want to add some hot sauce. Don't be afraid to add different things, but I'm going to let it simmer for a little bit and then let him taste it and see if he thinks it needs some sriracha or Louisiana hot sauce. I don't know what all we have, but you know, we want it a little spicy around here. So that's looking good. I'm just going to turn the heat down, let it simmer. My battery's going to die. We will be back and um, start on the cheesecake. Alrighty guys, we are getting ready to make the cheesecake and get it in the oven. It takes about 30 minutes to bake. It is a very simple recipe though. We're gonna need three eggs, which I have back here, three cups of the non-fat Greek yogurt. This is the Chobani non-fat Greek yogurt. I literally had exactly three cups left. I was afraid that I wasn't gonna have enough. Half a tablespoon of caramel extract. I've never used the caramel. I always just use vanilla and it works fine. 
three fourths of a cup of 100% pure pumpkin, not pumpkin puree, so make sure it's 100% pure pumpkin, one teaspoon of um, pumpkin pie spice, and then one teaspoon of cinnamon as well. And then we're gonna do three tablespoons of Splenda. This is some old Splenda that I got a chair I had to get up at the top of the cabinet and dig it out. This definitely needs to be used up, but I'm gonna use the Splenda instead of monk fruit sweetener. It does call for stevia. I personally do not like stevia. I don't think it's sweet. I don't know why. But regardless, preheat oven to 350 degrees, so I have done that. Um, I have my mixing bowl here. I have my pie dish, I guess. I'm gonna just spray it really well with the Pam so that it doesn't stick. And here we're gonna do eggs, pumpkin, uh, vanilla extract, cinnamon, pumpkin pie spice, and stevia and blend it in. Then we are going to, oh, I forgot to say you have to have a small box of the Jell-O uh, instant sugar-free cheesecake pudding mix or you could use um, vanilla if you don't have the cheesecake. And once we get everything blended then we are going to whisk in the pudding mix until it is in there well and then we will put in the pie dish, bake for 30 minutes, and then it's gonna set out for a little while. We'll cover it in plastic, and it needs to stay in the refrigerator for at least 12 hours. Every time I've made this recipe, it's come out pretty well, so let's get started. Alrighty, we have the three eggs in here. I don't know if you can see those or not. I need to get some clear mixing bowls. I just told Charlie that. I swear I used to have some, and I gave them away. So we're gonna just start going in with everything. Uh, we're gonna put in the three cups of, I swear I did this the last time, this is supposed to go in last. Oh well, it'll be fine. We'll just mix in the pudding last. Huh. I'm not good at following directions. So we're gonna go ahead and go in with our yogurt. Of course I would pick this up first. And we're gonna go in with our pumpkin. And we're gonna go in with one teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice. This is a brand new one that I picked up the other day. And we're also gonna go in with one teaspoon of ground cinnamon. And then we are gonna do half a tablespoon of vanilla extract. Again, it calls for caramel, but I've always used vanilla and it's delicious. I just never see or remember to pick up the caramel. I don't know why. And then we're gonna go ahead and do our three tablespoons of Splenda. One, two, three. And I kinda did heaping tablespoons because it's zero points and we like it sweet. Now I'm gonna mix it well, and then we will put in the Jell-O cheesecake pudding mix and whisk that in until it's nice and smooth. Okay, so we have that mixed pretty well. I'm going to put in my box of cheesecake, Jell-O cheesecake mix. And we're gonna mix that in well. I'll see if I need to get out my whisk or not. I might not, because it seems pretty smooth already. So I am gonna go ahead and whisk it some just because the jello seems a little clumpy in there, and I don't want that. Okay, now I feel like we are at a good, smooth consistency. I'm gonna spray my pie dish, pour it in, and put it in the oven for 30 minutes. Okay, there we go, in the oven for 30 minutes, 350 degrees. Alrighty guys, here is the pumpkin cheesecake fresh out of the oven. We're just gonna let it set here and cool, and then I will cover it with plastic wrap, stick it in the fridge. We will try it tomorrow. This comes out to one point per slice. I will have the recipe linked down below and also typed out below because it's kind of a weird link. I'm not even sure how I found this recipe, so sometimes it's hard for people to follow the link. So I will type it out, super simple recipe. But, um, very delicious, low in points. So I am plating up the beef ragu. This is the pasta and the uh, broccoli that goes along with it. Okay, so the blue containers in the front are mine. This has one serving of pasta and then I just split one bag of the uh, steamed broccoli in my container. I still need to season the broccoli. I need to not forget. And then Charlie basically has five servings split across the three containers of his. I will have some zucchini with mine, like I said, to bulk it up. And then this over here, I weighed this. This is the um, beef ragu out of the crock pot and it weighs 1,315 grams. And I'm just going to take that and divide it by six. Let's see here, 1,315 divided by six. So we'll each get like 219 grams. Which, so between 219 and 220 in each container, I'm gonna go ahead and put that over the pasta, but that's how I, you know, 
divide it out. Now, if it's just ground turkey or something, at like zero points or maybe one point or something, I don't specifically weigh it out or whatever. But in this case, since I did use ground beef, I am going to weigh it and portion it out accordingly. So let me get that portion out and then I will show you the finished product. Okay, so here is the completed beef ragu by Skinny Taste. Uh, we will see how that tastes. I actually haven't even done a taste test, so um, it will be a surprise. But this is what we will have for dinner tonight because tomorrow night is Halloween. So we will have the chili on Halloween. I just feel like it's, you know, something that you do. You have chili on Halloween. Alrighty, here is the ground turkey chili looking delicious. Charlie added a little bit more hot sauce to it, so it's going to be nice and spicy for us. I did not make my corn muffins or anything to go with it. We will just have regular premium salting crackers with it. I think this is a zero point meal. I don't think anything in it counts points. I will, um, of course, have it linked down below. But uh, yeah, I changed it up and did not use the same beans that I used the last time because those um, chili beans and kidney beans and stuff like that can really add points. Black beans, pinto beans are zero, I think. So anyway, I will confirm that with the link and everything down below, but looking super good. Okay, guys, thank you so much for joining me for another Sunday meal prep video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you try some of these recipes. These are great fall and winter recipes. Both of them, I think, are going to be delicious this week. Um, the chili is good and spicy. Charlie did add some Louisiana hot sauce to it and a little bit of sriracha as well. So that is optional if you want to spice up your chili. But I love you guys. Thank you all. Thank you to my Jennifer's Gems that make it all the way to the end. I will see you all in the next video. Mwah.